Hi, and welcome back to Community Hotline. My name is Monica Weitzel. We're here in Gresham at Metro East Community Media. And our final segment tonight is a new organization to me, and I'm happy to introduce you to Nancy Flick, mm -hmm. who is the board chair for Metro, uh, Girls on the Run Portland Metro, mm -hmm. and Carrie Ray Connolly, and you are a board member mm -hmm. for Girls on the Run. I had not heard of Girls on the Run until I, I don't know, I happened to run across it. I don't know if it was on a website or if it was an event you had or what, but it sounds like a really fun organization for girls. So I'm thinking, Nancy, maybe you could start and sure. tell me a little bit about the mission, how this came about, and, and, and what Girls on the Run is all about. Absolutely. Girls on the Run is actually a national program. It was started in 1996 by Molly Barker, who was a triathlete or a marathon runner and also a counselor. And she felt the need uh, for girls at this age to break out of what she called the girl box. Mm -hmm. And so she built this curriculum around uh, third through fifth grade girls uh, to help self-empower them. And she found running was a perfect outlet for that to weave into creating um, an emphasis of overall health, not just running. It's not just a running program. It's a very deliberate curriculum um, okay. that deals with issues of self-esteem, friendship, um, community service. It's a very unique program that way because it addresses the whole girl. Right. And so the girls work for 12 weeks and they uh, work with a coach, a team of coaches, two or three, and uh, they weave their way through this curriculum. They first start uh, talking about themselves and what it means to stand up for yourself and be a person of integrity. And while they're doing this, they're running around the field or playing games and talking about the subject for the day. And then they work into a teamwork uh, theme and they learn about friendship and what it is to be a good friend and being a teammate and um, you know at this age there's lots of issues around gossiping and bullying so mm -hmm. that's weaved in the curriculum as well and that's then the a very special part of the program is the community part and so the last portion of the program they uh, talk about community and, and they actually implement a community service project. Oh, how great is that? Yeah, and all the while they're uh, building up their endurance for a 5K run and at the end we all get together for the Starlight Run. Oh, how fun. Oh, yeah. fun. So, um, Carrie Ray, how did you become involved with this organization? I became involved with this organization. Um, I met Nancy when it started, when, it, when Nancy was first deciding to bring it to Portland. And um, we were, it was through another, through a health and fitness organization that we were a part of at the time. And I just immediately was hooked. And I thought, wow, an empowerment program for girls, third, fourth, and fifth grade. Which is a pretty just, crucial age. Mm -hmm. It's mean, a crucial yeah. age, and it's a, really, it's a really fun program. The girls have a blast, but it's very thoughtful, and the curriculum is very intentional. Like Nancy mentioned, talking about these areas of the girls' lives that they mm -hmm. often don't get asked to talk about. So what sure. are your values? Oh, should we talk about values? What are values? Yeah. And how each yeah. girl is different and how each girl is unique, but yet we can respect each other even though we're I different and so we can share our mm -hmm. histories we can share who we are and there's a mutual sense of respect and understanding and they're having fun and they're running at the same time so the program just is multifaceted it, it, it hits on all it's sorts really of powerful. levels doesn't it mm -hmm. so you brought this organization to portland is well, that i was right? one of the the people that got it started here and we started in 2007 which is 12 girls and i always marvel because we're expecting to have about 350 girls in the program wow. this spring. Who can be involved so, in this? What, where, do, where do the girls come from? Um, we're mostly school-based, so uh, we, right now we're accepting site applications. The school applies, and then we uh, bring the girls from that school. Um, girls from outside the school, if there's room, can also join in at okay, the school so level. And if a school hears about this organization and wants to become involved, the school would actually contact you? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, and what area does this cover? I know it's, it's Portland Metro, so what area is that? We are in Multnomah that? County, and we also have a couple programs in Washington County and Clackamas. Okay. So, so we're looking yeah. to, to expand because uh, the girls that do the program, and we have girls repeat the program third, fourth, and fifth grade. They come back every year because they have so much fun. I bet they do. And there's something new they can get from it each time as well. Sure, and it's probably an ever-changing program as, you know, like now there's so much emphasis on, on the bullying. So mm -hmm. you probably bring that in more. People are becoming more aware of the... Right of how awful that is and how prevalent that yeah, is. And that's a nice tie-in too because they do talk about um, bullying in schools. Sometimes mm -hmm. it's in their PE class, sometimes classroom teachers address it. But just coming
looking at it from all angles because it's such a big issue and it's a really big concern. And so Girls on the Run just provides a really safe environment. There are up to 15 girls in each team, third, fourth, and fifth grade. So you have the perspective of a third grader and you have the perspective of a fifth grader. And that just melds together very nicely and these ideas are supported and they're encouraged to share. Mm -hmm. And um, so Something we found too is that, you know, with all the cuts going on in school, there aren't, a lot of schools in the Portland area in particular don't have school counselors at their site anymore. Oh, and so gosh. the issues we're dealing with are a lot of the issues that might be addressed with a school counselor. So principals that have brought us to their school have really appreciated that oh, component sure of have. the program. Yeah. So in each team, it's not just third graders, fourth graders, or fifth graders, yeah. they're all melded together, Correct. which mm -hmm. is great. So how, how does this work when you say it's it's 12 weeks and is it after is it an after school program is that what it is yes okay. they meet twice a week for an hour and a half and is it at the school at that particular school is that where you meet at the school we also have a couple park sites okay so we you know we found there's a couple schools particularly in the downtown area that have difficult sites for running right, right. so we meet at a park Oh, in that case, great. and then we, in those sites, it's kind of a, a fun experience because girls come from different schools, so oh, they yeah. might not know each other. Yeah. So um, you brought some pictures, and mm -hmm. I think we should take a look at those pictures, yeah. and maybe you can explain to us what we're looking at. <laughs> we love our pictures. <laughs> so we have good stories. <laughs> I, I bet, I bet you have some great kids. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Okay, now where is this? This oh. is the Starlight Run last oh. spring, and this is just a great overview. You can see all the blue I shirts. Those kids. So a really special part of the program is our Running Buddy program. Um, it's a really great way to volunteer for two quick experiences. You run a, five, a practice 5K and you get matched up with a girl and then you come back at the Starlight Run and run with that same girl so that you can accompany her during the run. And so this is where you see all the blue shirts. They're all running together. And this is the practice run where we first meet their buddies. And so uh, that's at Gabriel Park and you can just see the yeah, sea of girls and women. Yeah. And it's just, it's such a fun and vibrant experience. Here's some uh, girls at a different Starlight Run. I think that's the year before. One with her buddy, smiling big. And mm -hmm. they always like to, along the route, they like to have signs to encourage their teammates. And the role of the running buddy is really, is integral because first and foremost, it's keeping each individual girl safe along okay. the running yes, route sure. um, because it's a one-on-one -on -one while they're running. The <laughs> running buddy runs at the pace of the girl, but then it's the girl's special cheerleader oh. and support system <laughs> and they encourage each other and they work together and there you can wear see. Wear tutus. They wear tutus <laughs> and wear silly goggles and, yeah. and do face paint oh, or they fun. wear, yeah. Um, there's just so much magic and, and um, specialness that happens with the buddy the buddies and their girls. So you can imagine with 350 girls, we need 350 buddies. So that's a big project yeah, recruiting all those women. So how does that work? What is, if, if say, say my daughter, she's a runner and maybe she wants to volunteer some time to do something like that. I could totally mm -hmm. see her doing that. What, what would her commitment be? What would you ask of her well, as there's a running buddy? A, there's a couple opportunities actually. If, if she has more time and wants to get involved more than as a running buddy, uh, we need coaches. Oh, okay. And so those are volunteer positions and we, we have a full day training. We train our coaches mm -hmm. and then you have a team of girls that you work through the curriculum. So and it'd be the 12-week so, mm -hmm, Be a 12-week commitment and twice a week. next year. Or, yeah. or mm -hmm. how, how does that work? Do you have all these different schools so they could probably do it as much as they wanted to? Is that right? Well, one, or once per season. Once right. per season? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and coaches don't have to be runners. They don't yeah. have to be, you know, fitness enthusiasts, but they have to, you know, be comfortable with working with girls and being true to themselves and, yeah. and um, you know, up for exploring the curriculum and having ended, a great time. <laughs> I can see that I ended up being coaching track for kids for mm -hmm. seven years because yeah. nobody else would do it at, right. at my daughter's school a long time ago. And, and yeah, you just you have to have the enthusiasm and the Well, and the and feedback the we get is that, I mean, the curriculum, it, it touches more than just the girls. I mm -hmm. mean, we have, we have great retention with our coaches because, you know, time after time they come to us and say, you know, I wish I would have had this when I was a kid, mm -hmm. and I think I got more out of this than the girls did. Isn't, isn't that usually the way when you do volunteer work yeah, anyway? Yeah, and so so that's a bigger commitment, and we are, we're always looking for coaches. In fact, right now, up through January is when we're really recruiting coaches. Okay. Running Buddies, uh, if you just check with our website, we have you register in February, and then our Practice 5K will be at the beginning of May this year. So you would need to commit to that time. It's in the late afternoon at Gabriel Park. You come out, you get matched up with your buddy, and you run with her for 5K. It's your practice a, a run. Weekday. It's mm -hmm. a Thursday yeah, evening, like late afternoon. Okay. 
and then you'll run with her again for the Starlight Run. And so if they go to our website, uh, we'll have information up about the specific dates and times that are required. So that's not much of a commitment. It's two 5K runs. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that's not And a lot of fun. Yeah. Oh, that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Tell, me, tell me what you think this has done for the girls. Can you give me an example of, of maybe somebody who has been impacted by some, some girl who's really been impacted by this? Um, I, can, I can share a story um, from one of our girls. So we, we serve several, um, several schools in Portland that are our Title I schools mm -hmm. and tend to have a higher diversity of, mm -hmm. of students um, that attend the schools. And one of the girls um, wouldn't have had the opportunity or, or wasn't even exposed to sports or exercise or programs like the Girl Power programs like this. Um, but since it was through school and, and her mom said, sure, we can sign you up for this. And it was just amazing for her to be a true girl and to not have the responsibilities that she often had at home. And then when she um, went back to school the next year and wrote a little report about, you know, all about me. And then she said her hero, many kids write their mom or their aunt. And she wrote her running buddy. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> like really impacted that's, her. Yeah, and, you know, cool. and they write little letters to each other. And this has been a relationship for three years now. And they've been running wow. buddies over the years. How and great is that? So, the, you know, you think as a running buddy, it's just two nights. I can, you know, do this and yeah. check it off my list. But it really has such an impact on the girls and on the running buddies. And too. on the families in some cases. I, ha I coached a team and I had one, um, I had sisters. I had a fifth grader and a third grade sister. Uh -huh. And I, I didn't see their parents very much because I worked through the school at the after school program. And so they came and got the kids when we were done. And at the end of the program, the mom came up to me and she said, I, because of this, I started running with my daughters, and we go out and we go running together now. Oh, that's so great. And so it's just, it's something they can do together that yeah. they got from the program. Well, and it's a healthy thing to do. It's mm -hmm. something that will bring them together. I mean, that's really yeah. a positive thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's funny, because we just talked with the Big Brothers Big Sisters group, and now mm -hmm. this group, and they're, they're, they're both ones where mentoring mm -hmm. makes such mm -hmm. a difference in kids' lives. And I, you know, it's something that, like, like Shabri was saying in the last group, you know, mentoring's been around for a long time, but I think People are seeing more and more how important that is. Mm -hmm. And there are so many families that really are in need of somebody to mentor those kids, and the girls especially. And especially when it comes to sports and physical activity, girls in the past haven't really been encouraged. And I think that's it's really super to do that. Mm -hmm. So if, if, some, if um, a, a girl is interested, in, or if a school is interested in, the children there, the, the girls at the school, do they, they have the option of participating in that. Is that right? Right. Is there is there a cost to there them? There is a cost. Okay, uh, I can't say the we can't okay. say the cost. There the is air, a fee, uh, but we have scholarships available. Um, all the family needs to do is there's a sign up process, okay, and we so, just it's an honor system. And I'm sure it's not a large fee either. No. So. And then we do serve Title One schools, and those are scholarship sites. Okay. And so, so, so people are interested. If, if, you know, if, if somebody hears about this and they mm -hmm. want their school mm -hmm. to be involved, they can go to the, your website and maybe get some more information about yes. that. And there is a site application on their website. The deadline's actually, it says today, we'll be updating that. We're going to be accepting applications through the end of the month. So Wonderful. there's still time. Good, good. And if people want to be a running buddy or if they want to be a coach, the running buddies sign up in February. Mm -hmm. And then the coaches. We're looking anytime, for now. Yep. Anytime. We're looking for them now. Good. good. <laughs> what? what um, before I let you go, what, do, what else do we need to know about Girls on the Run? What, what do you have to say to the girls out there that might be interested in being part of this program? If their school offered it and they weren't sure they wanted to participate, what would you say to them? There's room for everybody in the program, and that's the beautiful thing about running is that it's an individual thing. It's some girls come to the program, they've never done a sport in their life. Some girls have done every sport they can get their hand on. And the beautiful thing about the curriculum is that it's, it's all joined together. And so if you've never run before, you don't have to worry about it because we'll, we'll figure out how to get you ready to run and you'll enjoy it. And we just want to get you out there because it's so much fun. I bet it is. You get a lot out of it yourself, Carrie. Mm -hmm. yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I continue to tell stories and get tears in my eyes and have lots of giggles and hugs from the girls, and it's just a joy. And what it's can be better than that? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so if people are interested, your website is? It's uh, girlsontherunpdx.org. Okay, Girls on the Run. Mm -hmm. So if you are interested in becoming a running buddy and helping out a, a young girl who needs to get some exercise and get, build some self-esteem and have somebody special as part of their life for this short, short little time, you can help out there if you want to help coach 
or if you just want to get involved in one way or another, go to the website, girlsontherunpdx.org. And uh, do check them out. It sounds like it's a, a great organization, and I wish you the best of luck. I hope Thank you get you. A, lot, a lot of volunteer involvement. This has been the Community Hotline Show. I'm glad you joined us tonight. My name is Monica Weitzel. We'll see you next week. When disaster strikes, emergency professionals may be overwhelmed. Can you care for yourself and loved ones until help arrives? Can you help neighbors amidst the chaos? Are you ready? Get ready. Join a community emergency response team and learn skills that will save lives. The City of Gresham offers free CERT training. Sign up for the next class and get ready. What is it like to have a loved one die? Each month, over 300 children and teens who have experienced a death turn to the Dougie Center for Grieving Children. Inside, they find a safe place where they can share their experiences and move through the grieving process. The programs at the Dougie Center are funded by private donations. Thank you for making it possible for kids like me to attend groups free of charge. The Dougie Center, because grief comes in all sizes. This is the story about a group of kids who volunteer. Do something nice for someone. We fixed stuff. Did some art projects with the kids. We fixed up this house. We worked in the woods. Cleaned up the park. Did something for the planet. We just did it. No other reason. And you know what? It was great. At first, they didn't know each other. Well, that didn't last long. This guy is really funny. We ace are my new friends. Are you into it? Call 4-H or check out our website at areyouintoit.com. If you are experiencing physical, emotional, or sexual abuse, help is available. I'm scared. He's been beating on me. If you need help, or if you want to help stop domestic abuse, call our crisis line at 503-281-2442. You don't have to be alone. Make a call that could save your life. Bradley Engel House, providing hope and safety for more than 30 years. This may look like just a meal to you. To an elderly person in your community, Meals on Wheels is a social and nutritional lifeline. Many seniors can't leave their homes to buy food and have no family nearby. Sometimes their Meals on Wheels driver is the only other person they see all day. It takes just a few hours to help deliver much more than a meal. To find out how you can help, call 503-736-6325.